Howdy guys. All right, so in this video, what I want to do is continue the Python projects here, and I want to talk a little bit more about the shelf tools. All right, so it's totally possible for us to actually create these types of shelf tools, right? If we actually just right click on any of these guys and uh, just hit edit tool, you'll notice that it brings up this uh, window that allows us to edit the contents of this particular shelf tool, right? And we have these options, we have the script, all right? So we actually can type in some Python, you know, that gets executed when you press this particular shelf tool button. Uh, you can include a bunch of help, uh, contexts, and uh, hotkeys. All right, so let's actually walk through the process of doing this on our own. So I'm going to make my own new shelf. All right, I'm just going to call this uh, Indie Pixel and Indie Pixel for the label, like so. Hit apply and accept. So now I have a brand new empty shelf where I can put all of my own tools. All right, so before we actually go and, you know, start writing some Python, let's actually look at a couple ways of basically saving out, I would call, you know, like presets, predefined sets of nodes. All right, so, you know, in this case, what I do a lot, you know, when I'm setting up a particle system or some sort of effect right off the bat, is I always create a, an effect source. All right, so I just went and created a geometry container. Uh, and you do that by hitting tab on the keyboard. And then just typing in ge geometry, and that will come up in the tab menu, and you can hit enter and then just place it. All right. So what I usually do is I'll go and create this, you know, geometry container. I'll put a sphere in there because I want to emit, you know, from this particular source. I'll set it to a polygon. Uh, and then what I'll do is add a little bit of noise because usually we animate this stuff just to create some variation in the actual effect. And then... You know, usually I don't want any particles emitted from the bottom, so I'll clip this off like so. So I'll use a clip node, and then I'll use a polyfill node to uh, fill the open areas here. Uh, and that's usually just because, you know, we convert this to a volume and then scatter a bunch of points in there. All right, so I also like to go and just set this to single polygon. All right, so, you know, that's the usual setup. Now, what you can do with your own shelf tools is you can take this setup now, right? So if I just hit U on the keyboard to jump up and out of the network there, what I can do is I can actually just click and drag this up to my shelf like so, and it'll create a button for this. So if I were actually delete this now and just hit my button that I just created in the shelf, it actually sets that back up for me. So if I double click on that, you can see everything's all set up. All right, and that's because basically what it's doing is it's recording the set of actions. Right. So if I were to actually right click on this new shelf tool that we created and use the edit tool option there and go to the script, you can see that we go and automatically generate a bunch of Python code. All right. So this is quite a bit of code. Now, it doesn't actually take this amount of code. This is just the auto generated code that um, is generated by Houdini when you um, click and drag a preset like that. What we can do is we can actually make our own versions of these tools to set up the things that we want. All right. So we can create, you know, a, a preset, if you will, or some sort of network setup. You can do a lot of stuff. Really, what I want to do is I want to now, you know, write my own Python code to basically just reset up this network so we can practice our Python a little bit more. So how do we go and make our own custom tool? All right, so let's walk through the process. Okay, so let's come up to our shelf that we created. I'm gonna right click on it and say uh, new tool, right, like so. And I'm gonna go to the options tab and I'm gonna give this a name. So we're gonna say create, um, you know, FX source, like so. And then let's spell that correctly. And then if I come down here, we'll say FX source for the label. That'll be what's uh, shown here in the actual tab itself. Instead of new tool, it'll be effect source. And we can also change the icon. So you can make your own icon for it and, you know, load it up. It accepts most of the traditional image formats. All right. So with that, we are all set up. So I'm going to hit apply. All right. So you can see now our label is set to effect source. And uh, next, what I can do is I can go and, you know, add some Python in here. Um, I can also define my own help for this, which I'll make in a separate video because uh, it actually uses a markup language to generate these help. And it actually is styled in the format that you see when you go to the Houdini help, right? So when we actually launch this, so you can actually style it uh, this way, but that requires another video. All right. And we can go to the context and really, I only want to create this when uh, this is actually in the object context or the SOP level context here. All right, so I'm just going to click this OBJ here, and then you can go and um, assign it to hotkeys. 
So let's actually focus on uh, creating the code here. So I'm going to double click the effects source here just so I can see how the network is actually set up. And what I want to do is I just want to write the code necessary to set this same exact uh, network up. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to um, get uh, the OBJ context. And then what we want to do is we want to create a geometry container. So we want to create a, a geo container. All right. And so to do that, all we need to do is we need to type out a variable name called OBJ. All right. And it could be whatever name. I just type OBJ just so I know that this is getting the OBJ context. And then we do who dot node. All right. So who is the base module for Python inside of Houdini. All right. So, and then if you say node, we're going to go and find a node. And all we need to do is open up a uh, parenthesis like so and put two quotation marks and a forward slash and OBJ like so. And that basically gets me access to OBJ, this, this entire space here. So I can place stuff into that particular space. All right. So just to verify that, let's actually create a new variable called uh, geo node and let's create our first node. What I want to do is I want to create a geometry container and I want to name it effect source. Okay. And so to do that, we're going to say OBJ dot uh, create node. All right. Just like we've seen before. And we want to create a particular type of node here. And if you come to any node inside of Houdini, inside of the net network editor here, and you uh, click this little info button, you can get the name of the node that you want to create right here. All right. So that's the type that we're expecting. So we want to type in geo right here. So we say geo and then we do a comma and then we give it a name. So in this case, I want to do FX source like so. All right. I'm going to apply. Let's make this a little bit smaller. All right. So now that I've hit apply, let's go and actually click our button up here and voila, look at that. We actually have a new geometry container named FX source one because there's already a geometry container um, named FX source. So it just increments it for you. And inside of it, there's obviously nothing. So what we want to do, let's actually delete that new one that was created and let's go and create all the notes first. Okay. So let's drop down here and I'm going to do two hashtags. And that's how we comment stuff out inside of Python. Okay. So we need to uh, create all the notes. All right. So let's first start uh, by creating a sphere node. So I'm going to say uh, sphere node for the variable name, because we actually want it to store references. Uh, to these nodes so we can set parameters on them and, you know, hook up their inputs automatically and stuff like that. All right. So that's what we're doing. We're go going to declare a variable here and I'm going to say it's going to be equal to the uh, geo node. All right. And the reason why we want to use the geo node is because we want to put a node inside of it. All right. So currently, you know, in Python world, the reference to geo node is this particular geometry container. All right. So we want to put a node in there. So we say geo node dot create node like so, and we want to create a sphere. So again, if you ever want to find the type, just hover over it and hit the uh, info button and the type is sphere. So easy enough. So I say sphere and you know, you don't have to actually give it a name. You know, we could give it, you know, a name of like my sphere, or you could actually leave a blank. All right. By default, it'll just give it, you know, whatever name, Houdini decides to choose. And in this case, it'll most likely be sphere. Okay. So let's go and create the mountain node. So we'll say MTN node for mountain node. And again, we want to put this inside of the geo node. So we'll say geo node dot create node like so. Awesome. And in this case, let's go look for the type. This was a weird one. This one's actually mountain colon colon 2.0. All right. So this is the second version. All right. And that's how you do namespacing inside of Houdini is you use the two colons there. We say 2.0. And again, I don't need to give it a name in this case. All right. So let's go and create the clip node. So we say uh, clip node equals equal to geo node dot create node like so. And this guy is clip, I believe. Yeah. Clip. There we go. Always good to double check. All right. That's usually where I'll go and set up a network or at least a rough network, and then I'll, I'll mimic it and then kind of run from there. Uh, you don't have to go and set everything up, obviously, but in this case, this is a re really simple example just to get you comfortable with the process. All right, so let's look at the polyfill, and this is, you know, polyfill for the type, so we'll just make another node. And I'm going to say fill node is equal to geo uh, node dot create 
node and we'll do polyfill like so awesome all right so let's test this out now we've gone that, that far okay so i'm going to hit apply and then hit the uh, effect source button that our own custom tool here and take a look all right and so if i dive inside look at that we have all the nodes now they're going to be situated right on top of each other um, manually you can go in here and just hit l on the keyboard and that'll space them out um, but we can actually do that here inside of python as well the first thing i want to do though is i just want to get all the nodes all hooked up all right so let's go and uh, delete all these guys we'll delete that guy there too and let's jump back into our example and so what I want to do is I want to set the inputs, right? So I don't want to wire all these guys together um, using Python over here. So let's uh, do that. We'll set all the inputs here. And the way that we do this, all right, is we need to get, let's start out with a really basic example. So what I want to do is I want to use the mountain node and I want to use its set input function. Okay, so this is the way this works. So we're going to say mountain node.setInput like so. All right, and the first argument is going to be the input to take in. All right, and that's going to be zero. And this is easy because there's only one input for this particular node. So that's the index of that input in this case, because there's only one. It's zero because they all start at zero. It's a zero based index. Okay. And we want to provide the node that we want to wire into it. In this case, it's the sphere node. All right. So in here I'm going to put in sphere node. And then finally, the third argument that it requires is the output node. And because there's only one, uh, we're just going to put zero. Okay, cool. So let's hit apply and uh, take a look at that. So I'm going to hit uh, effect source over here. And there's our new node. And let's actually hit L on the keyboard. And you'll notice that the sphere node is now hooked into the mountain node. All right. And that's because we took the mountain node and we called it set input function. And we said we want to hook up the first input with the sphere node and then set up the output of the first input. All right, in this case, we didn't really do anything. Okay, so cool, we're on our way. So let's hook everything else back up. All right, so we need to then take the clip node and say clip node.setInput, like so. And we need to type zero and the node that we wanna pass into the clip node is the mountain node, like so. And the output is set to zero. All right, so then we need to take the fill node dot set input we'll say zero for that first input and then we want to pass in the clip node so we say clip node like so all right so let's hit apply and test that out all right so i'm going to hit the effects source button our custom tool let's move that off to the side here and dive in and hit l on the keyboard and look at that we set up all of the network just like we had in the previous one that we did manually awesome so what I want to do now is I want to make sure that the display flag is all the way at the bottom. All right. So that's pretty easy. I also want to make sure that we uh, lay out the children. All right. Uh, or all the nodes, I should say, kind of gave it away there. So what we need to do is we need to call the layout children function that uh, is available on the geo node. All right. So if we say geo node dot uh, layout uh, children like so. You don't have to pass anything in. It does accept arguments, but by default, you don't have to pass anything in. So now if I hit apply and hit the FX source button and then dive into my new one, you can see that they're already laid out for me. Super cool. All right. So now let's take care of the uh, display flags. All right. So what I want to do is um, set flags like so. And I want to make sure that the um, fill node, so I'm going to say fill node, dot set display flag all right so the display flag is the blue flag all right so we want to set that down here like so all right so let's jump up and out and i'm going to delete this here and finish off the code so we're going to set the display flag to be true we just want it to be on all right so let's see what that does i'm going to apply and hit the tool button there in the shelf and look at that now the polyfill node is turned on but it's left the render flag on the sphere node. So all we need to do is uh, get the sphere node here and say set uh, render flag to false. All right, and make sure that these are capital for uh, Python. All right, so let's hit apply and let's delete this guy and recreate it like so. And let's take a look and look at that. Everything is all set up perfectly. 
Okay, so what we need to do now is set a few parameters. Um, so let me jump up and out using you on the keyboard. And I'm going to delete this guy and jump back into my example. So on the uh, sphere node, what I did is I set the primitive type to polygon. Now, one thing to understand about these menu items here is that they're also zero based index. So uh, basically primitive would be zero. Okay, so it would be equivalent to zero. Polygon would be one. Polygon mesh would be two, three, four, five, six. All right. So what we want is polygon or one. All right, so let's set all of our parameters to get this guy going. So I'm going to create a new comment here and say set uh, params. Alrighty, let's actually make a little more space for ourselves too. There we go. Cool. So now I'm going to say that the sphere node dot parm, like so, and we want to get the name of the parameter. So in this case, if we hover over the parameter here, you can see the parameter name is type. All right, so let's type in type, so type, and we'll say set, and we'll set that to one. All right, you can also type in true if you want. I'm just going to leave it at one. All right, so now we're going to get the polygon type set. So the only other thing that I think I really set by hand here was polyfill mode. So I set it to a single polygon here. So in the polyfill node, what I want to do is I want to do the same sort of operation, but I want to set this particular parameter, and that parameter's name is fill mode. All right, so all we need to do is go and get the fill node here, get the parameter that we want to set. All right, and that was, again, fill mode. Okay, so fill mode, like so, and then we want to say dot set, and we will set that to, uh, what number is that? So single polygon is zero. All right, so zero, one, two, three, four, five. So zero is what we want. So it's automatically sets it to the single polygon type for us. So let's hit apply and accept, jump up and out. Remember, this is our example. And let's go and hit our new custom tool and go inside and look at that. We get the basically the same result. All right, so the sphere is set to polygon, polyfill is set to single polygon. Awesome. We got all these nodes all hooked together, all created. So now, Anytime I want a new source for, you know, some particles or maybe some, you know, pyro effects, I can just hit this and I have the setup automatically created for me. All right. So that's what I wanted to show in this video. Hope you guys like it. Thanks so much.